I just finished talking about UFOs and I look through this lens and on the other side of it is this, what I describe as a Hollywood flying saucer um, with a, a longer sort of uh, base to it, almost like a pancakey shape with rounded edges, uh, flat bottom and a very small dome on the top. Um, and, and at first it was perfectly still. And, I, and to tell you the truth, I thought it was like some sort of trick or you guys had a sticker on the other side of the lens <laughs> with a UFO on it or something, you know, just trying to have a bit of fun. And so we went to the Paradigm Conference in Australia. And do you remember what happened there? I had the equipment set up out on the... <laughs> and would you like to tell the story around that? That was quite, quite the event that we had happen out there on the deck of the uh, conference. That was, it was very, very interesting. I just finished a, a talk, um, you know, and it was a, you know, a packed room and there was a lot of people there. And I'd, I was, you know, this happens time and time again too, um, on the way to conferences, on the way back from conferences, we see them. But on this special occasion, you had your your super rig set up, you know, with your, your big thermal camera and it records onto SD card and, record, you know, rec all records onto the unit, whatever the case is. And I'd never seen, what, uh, there, there it is in the background, I'd, um, I'd never actually seen through a thermal camera before at the time. And so, and you asked if um, I'd like to have a look and I was like, yeah, definitely. Why not? You know, I'd love to, you know, and so sure enough, and I just finished talking about UFOs and I look through this lens and on the other side of it is this, what I describe as a Hollywood flying saucer um, with a, a longer sort of uh, base to it, almost like a pancakey shape with rounded edges, uh, flat bottom and a very small dome on the top. Um, and, and, at first, it was perfectly still. And, I, and to tell you the truth, I thought it was like some sort of trick or you guys had a sticker on the other side of the lens <laughs> with a UFO on it or something, you know, just trying to have a bit of fun or whatever. But And then I saw it starting to move to the right. And I was like, okay, um, is this, should this be here? You know, is this recording? And, and, it, and I remember you saying, well, what, what's going on? I said, well, there's a UFO here and it's moved or something, you know, and what's the chances finishing a UFO tour, going out, looking through your equipment and then seeing a UFO sitting there waiting, almost wait. And you saw how low it was as well. It was incredible. I mean, it was going between buildings. You could see the buildings in the Gold Coast, behind so it was very very low we were up how many stories maybe six or seven or eight stories up on a balcony and so we're looking out over and this thing was virtually directly ahead i'm just seeing what it looks like a saucer shaped thing it's slowly moving to the right i'm trying to get it on camera but i don't see it on uh in, in visible here um and so it was very low and completely invisible to the naked eye no, you couldn't see it. So uh, I've, you've taken over the camera, started recording and, and everything. And, and oh, my God. And it, then it disappeared. And I didn't see what happened. I've run inside to grab my 4K camera just to show that there was nothing in the sky at the time. So I've started filming while you guys were, were filming, while you were filming the the, the UFO. <laughs> and, um, and I just remember going, oh, my God, this is incredible. And we had how many people? Maybe 15 people out on the balcony. And, you know, everyone's really excited and all this sort of stuff. And you guys are pretty excited. And I remember at the end of it uh, that you guys went up to the hotel room to, to look at the footage. And, um, and then I think I got a call or something from you guys a little bit later and saying, you're not going to believe this. But guess what? Uh, what? Uh, well, the, um, the, the video recorded. Uh, sorry, the audio recorded, but not the video part. So you had like a, what, a black sort of staticky where the video should have been. And then you had the audio. So you could hear us talking about seeing this incredible UFO moving, you know, through the sky down low. You could hear us all talking and everyone excited, but no video. So, yeah. and, as, and I remember you telling me at the time, there was, that was never happened before and never happened since. I remember you telling me at the time. So that was quite incredible. I mean. Just part of one of the high strangeness uh, side topics of this UFO phenomenon. Um, they seem to affect uh, cameras. Some want us to film them and some don't.
Yeah, we were we were so excited with you, Damien, because I had just looked through the thermal, saw nothing, and then I said, "Why don't you take a look through and see what you might see?" And sure enough, you saw a classic craft, and I was so excited because we were recording. We did go back to the hotel room to look, and it was all snow on the video. We captured the audio perfectly. And I was almost in tears because here was the capture of a century, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, it yeah. wouldn't let us record it. It was only the audio. There's something there. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. I'm going to zoom in on that. And Mark, you know, with his cameras, he documented us out there on the deck. Uh, when we have that audio, of course, right from the camera, we have Mark recording this whole thing or parts of it with his cameras as well. So it was pretty incredible. And, uh, you know, after that, we got to know you the following year. We proposed that we would come to Australia for three weeks and you came with us for a good half of the time. Let's talk about that a little bit. That was quite the adventure. What were the highlights of what we experienced there. Okay, yeah, we did go up the central coast for a little while, didn't we? Uh, hired a uh, kind of better, uh, one of those um, house share kind of homes, wasn't it? Um, Airbnb. Whatever, whatever you, Airbnb kind of thing, yeah. And um, yeah, that was really interesting. A beautiful place too. Uh, right outside the ocean across the road. And oh my God, that was absolutely beautiful. And um, thanks for that, guys. Anyway, by the way, <laughs> that was great. We went to Tipperary, and which is an area um, which is southwest of Taree, New South Wales, which is known um, as a hotspot. I mean, I've at nearly every time I've gone there with Mike and a couple of others, we've actually witnessed and filmed um, paranormal or UFO type phenomenon, uh, where we've had the electromagnetic field meters go haywire, and we've filmed and seen um, shafts of light, you know, six foot long. Um, you know, two to three feet in diameter, flying to the ground on video and disappear without making a sound. And the, the, one of the funniest parts is um, I actually had one fly over my shoulder right in front of Mike Williams and another gentleman called Lance who'd just taken off up to his van. He just missed it. But it flew over my shoulder, melted into the ground, literally about three inches from my hand as I was picking up a camera. And both of us jumped about 15 feet in the air. Um, we didn't know what was going on. It was just an all of a sudden very quick thing. And it wasn't until the very next morning that going through the footage from that night, we realized that um, the EMF meter, the tri-field meter was going haywire. So something was affecting the natural Earth's magnetic field. Um, and at the same time, we caught 13 objects of the same type flying into the ground, into the valley just behind us melting into the ground, melting into the trees, no sound whatsoever. And I don't know what can do that. As far as I know, I've never seen anything like that before or since. That was a very unusual phenomenon. So that was just one example. We've seen big red beach ball looking things appear above a tree and then disappear and then all sorts of stuff like that. And this is an area, as you know, you came along with us. So it's very sparsely populated. There's, there's a, a couple of farms here and there, and that's about it, you know, and, but in this valley, there's nobody. If I, if I'm doing like a C5 or a, a sky watch with people, if I'm not having any luck, I'll go away by myself. Um, and then try and, and then sometimes I'll capture something by myself. It's really spun out. It's almost like it's meant for you to see it, but not other people. I, not all the time but sometimes so that that was my idea anyway and but yeah it was very unusual it was very strange um during the house i remember i couldn't sleep uh one of the nights at, at this um airbnb and i remember going up and looking out the window and witnessing these like red lights hanging out over the lake um and they were doing like little maneuvers i think i've got a couple of photos of it um i'm not a hunts I, mean, so I, I can't find those photos now. I don't know where they are, but they were, they were sort of like discus shaped red objects and that only lasted not very long um, as most sightings go, you know, they're, they're quite, um, they're, they're quite fleeting. Uh, but yeah, the, um, it was a very interesting time. I think also the first night we were there, we witnessed something up in the sky too. Um, and some light that, that would appear and then disappear and, 
Yeah, we had a lot of stuff happen. We had a lot of anomalous things happen. When we met you there and we all, I don't know if it, you pointed it out or somebody, the car we picked up for rental was just random. We didn't pick the license plate it would have. But that's right. Pointing out what was on the <laughs> license plate. Was it CE5? Yeah. Yeah. It was CE5 on the license plate, like it was meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, I mean, it could have been CE6. Yeah, it could have yeah. been CE7. It would have meant nothing, you know, but like, yeah, it just happened. Little things like that. And that's part of the high strangeness of this phenomenon. You know, I, I find I find it quite fascinating, the little side subjects. Um, not so much the conspiracy parts, but stuff that I can actually prove that, that's happening, that it that has happened, that, or that I have film of and witnesses. And I think that's very important. Otherwise, it's just a story. I mean, stories are great and all, but it's good to have some evidence, you know, <laughs> of, of, of your crazy experience. So.